Potter's Journal. It is August 9th, 2022, but today we will walk in and out of time just a bit, starting with today. Um, I just finished up the face jugs. You've seen me make these before. Uh, about a week ago, the pots were thrown. I knew I couldn't get the eyes on and one, um, the whole faces in one day. One day, I just did the eyes. Uh, a few days later, the teeth. Um, I did um, some garlic jars, too, in a new size for me. Very small, but this, I think, will be um, in an upcoming video. These things were not okay. Oh, this may kill the purists out there. This thing, these were not made on the treadle wheel. Um, but um, I'll tell you what, it did um, contribute in a way. Wow, the electric wheel, when you put your foot on the gas, you can really crank them out. Um, I know people who make pots, good pots, both ways. So, um... Um, um, yeah, something to say. Okay, last week's video, I was a big kill unloading. And, um, I, um, was glad to get good response to that. It was for the intent of getting, uh, some pots to take to somebody. And, um, um, real quick, let's look at that. So, just another firing. <laughs> okay, but a very big one. Hopefully some gifts. Well, not hopefully. Some gifts. Okay, that I want to get to an old friend. So that was back in May. Um, the kiln opening, I was glad. Then, a few days later, okay, to find somebody appreciative of the pots, um, what are you going to do with uh, ring plates, spoon rests, or derve plates, okay, with scenes from Picasso's Guernica, um, a mother, and a baby, a dead baby in her arms. Um, I'm not the first one to do variations on that painting in clay um, and I saw a recent one painted on a bridge underpass a new variation in the Ukraine um, the um, okay, X goes on the back um, I, um, I, I first ran into her at the pipe sculpture workshop that I did for many many years I say coordinator instructor because uh, coordinator especially because some of the people who did take it were up well up the ladder from me and now I think that's uh, where I first ran into her but um, this um, next video will be I think from 2008 okay this is not her works but Ted's but uh, the very figurative similarities in it let's see if we can come in closer on hers with a couple of du buffet like heads okay and um, she um, okay like so many people that I've worked with and got to know well the first time across the room how could anybody relate to this person is just so out there and you know look at that I think very um, Frida like I see a looks like a heart or something down there but um, first time in a crowded room so how could anybody relate to her she is so out there but in the end these are always the people whether it's somebody I went to school with or worked with or from the workshop um, who I got to know in the end the best and um, okay there we go there's a close-up and okay again this was at a pipe sculpture workshop that I did for many many years coordinator for that's an old beehive kiln and some finished pipes and this is just a quick uh, some of the work from some of the other participants oh and me from when I took both the um, many different parts of what I do to a street festival that was actually out in a city park the faux wood uh, 
my stomp collages okay the fish sculptures which we saw recently out at Eddie's Pottery and some of the figurative work and she always brought some real passion to the clay uh, for a way too of working with it um, at one time it was paper clay and I uh, um, really was great after so many years to catch up with her again okay back on the cold rainy May day okay so this is what back here uh, this is for my clay studio okay I'll and this is the nicer stash okay old clay yeah this nice isn't bought and, and this is what so the thing in the box is uh, a refractory fiber bat that oh uh, that wait a minute I was thinking what are you doing with this stuff you never made pottery but you <laughs> use this to make site specific work yes exactly. you worked with originally Nina Hall yes and then struck out on your own yeah okay so I could do this too <laughs> or better yet I could make pots with it so and, and, and wait a minute are the the, the slab, the, the extruder, too. I mean, most people would think handles for mugs. This, that's what you use to make the pieces. The site-specific work, the extruder. Yeah. This extruder, you put to the test. Yeah. You've used this extruder. Yeah. This extruder's done the job. <laughs> You've not only done this, the technique and the process of, but the process that people don't think about. You went through the process of the permission to build a piece on a community, where? This was at the Canton Junish Community Center, I yeah. believe? Yeah. yeah. So that's really something that, um, you know, any people think first about the technique, but they don't think about what you have to go through to actually build a piece. <laughs> <laughs> it was hell. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so that is it's formable yeah soft. yeah so was this used or was this extra bit of it that wasn't used for no for this was to build a kiln okay I got this yeah. as an extra thing to build a kiln okay. I didn't use it for that okay and you must have had me in mind look at that there's my name right on it you know I think I need uh, this might be just what I need right now might be just what I need right now because I've been um, oh, working with an electric kill now for three years, five years, that with the goal of, you know, making, <laughs> I needed the push, I needed the kick, maybe this will get me going. Here's Fred Olson's kiln book. I think I might have that one, but let me... So I came home with a truckload of stuff. Um, her passion also was into for alternative kilns, and I'm like, well, just get an electric kiln, and you'll have it done and over with. But some things you can't do in an electric kiln. Here's the Nina Hall um, pieces in process with a firebox underneath and a finished piece. This is what got her excited. And um, here in the next bit of this clip, hopefully, um, or hopefully, yes, I did um, get her to say what got her started on this and got her to um, relive her excitement and passion for it. Going on this? <laughs> What really got me going, what really got me like collecting material to build my own kiln was working with Nina Hole in Minneapolis and mm -hmm. you know we built, we built the, uh, we dug out and laid sand, leveled everything, uh, laid fire brick and made a kiln base mm -hmm. and it was about I would say three feet by four feet. You know and that's was, doable, and that's was, a doable size. Well, this, but this was to fire a piece on top of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so she had all the refractory fiber uh, blanket that we mm -hmm. needed, and you just, you know, wrapped up the sculpture with yeah. that. But yeah. anyway, really got me started was having the experience of having built that little kiln base, seeing how it worked, and then firing it and watching that wood pop when you threw it in there when okay. it was hot enough, yeah. just yeah. like whoosh it would explode it was beautiful and yeah. watching that piece 
get you know uh, uh, fired on that on that base. Yeah. It's just amazing. But yeah. Really awesome was when we took the blanket off and it was glowing red. And we had a huge audience, a bunch of art students. And, and it's really, in a sense, a performance piece, too, because these, the, 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 these works are not always permanent. No. In fact, I don't think even hers, probably a lot of hers, are not around. No, that particular yeah. piece uh, failed, actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but in a sense, that's not what it's about anyway. It's a, it so brings so many people together, the process and on and on. She gave everybody like little packets that had iron shavings and wood shavings and uh, the other little bits of chemical. Okay, so that. we bring into the dance and the performance of yeah, it. So everybody would rush in and throw these on the sculptures. It was cooling and, and it would yeah. just, you know, flare yeah. up and it create all these great, you know, uh, patterns all, all around the outside. It was wonderful. Yeah. So, a bad time, a year for me. I missed out on the building of it um, from extruded bits put together. These are some of the shards. Um, I missed out on the performance and the dance of it, but um, yeah, eventually, unfortunately, it did have to come down. Um, um, I, I do have some of the shards. Occasionally I get them out and I make sketches on how to incorporate them into another piece of sculpture. Um, it's not happened yet, but someday maybe it will happen. And, and, and you know, surprising too, I think um, in the process of um, being able to build this there, um, one of the people who um, um, did not want to see it happen were, was one of the people who actually got very involved in the building of it and the firing um, and the dance and the display. So, um, in addition to this, she also dragged me into a uh, project in Israel, so that's another story. Someday I'll put the slides together and um, share that part of my journal with you. Um, for now, I will say stop back next week. Okay, and see my truckload of stuff.